Two, one. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon to all viewers. Welcome to our fourth series of webinar on research and innovation brought to you by School of Electrical Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. We are now streaming live from School of Electrical Engineering's Facebook. My name is Sherry, and I will be hosting the session today. Without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Kamal Ibrahim, our Associate Chairman of Research and Academic Staff, to give a short opening as well as introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habibuddin, the Head of Power Engineering Research Group. Over to you, Prof. Uh, thank you very much, Wan Sharifah Huzaima, for introducing this event. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all viewers. Thank you once again to all viewers that follow this webinar through our FB Live School of Electrical Engineering. My name is Professor Muhammad Kamal Abdul Rahim. I'm a Chair of Research and Academic Staff School of Electrical Engineering Faculty of Engineering University of Animation. Our topic today entitled Overview of Protection System from Power Plant to Our Home by Head of Power Engineering Research Group, Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habibudi. Before he gives his presentation today, I would like to introduce by our speaker today. Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habibuddin graduated from University of Technology, Malaysia with a Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Engineering degrees in 2001 and 2003, respectively. He received a Doctor of Engineering degree specializing in power system from Hiroshima University in 2011. He is a currently senior lecturer at the Faculty of Engineering. His research interests include power system operation, and protections. He has published more than 30 publications in these areas. Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habudin is the head of the Power Engineering Research Group, University of Technology Malaysia. He also served as sustainability manager at the School of Electrical Engineering. He gave lectures on power system analysis and protections to undergraduate and postgraduate students at University of Technology Malaysia. Okay, just introduce about briefly about this synopsis today. The, web, the webinar will start by briefing introduction of power engineering with the group, then move to the main topic which covers the protection of the component of power system, operation of power system as well as a, as well as a brief info on domestic policy devices. Finally, some consultation, training and services of power engineering research group will be listed. Over to you. Okay, that's all about the synopsis. Now, I want to invite uh, Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habidin to give his presentation today. Over to you, Dr. Muhammad Hafiz Habibuddin. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kamal. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon, everyone. So, today I will be introducing our research group and uh, presenting something with the title of uh, protecting the power system from plant to our home. So uh, the outline of presentation as usual will be first introducing uh, the members of our group and then goes to the main topic and finally on the other activities of our group. Okay, we are a member of uh, nine staff with me as the head and then we have Prof. Gose, Dr. Sahawi, Dr. Jasro, Dr. Madiha, Dr. Muhammad Fadli, Dr. Rashida, Dr. Saiful Nizam, and Dr. Said Norazizul. Okay, we have various, in a, our interests are in various area in the power system. Some of the staff are registered as a professional engineer with the board of engineer. And we also have a competent electrical engineer registered with the energy commission and a certified PV system designer uh, with SEDA. Okay, so let's go to the main, uh, Topic. So electricity has uh, a long history, starting from uh, something that is uh, a dream of the general public to something of a necessity these days. Okay, uh, 
Uh, if we look at the supply quality previously, 12 hour supply is good enough. But over the years, uh, in the 1980s, one hour interruption is still acceptable. But these days, even one second interruption is not acceptable anymore. Just imagine if you have a have lost your Wi-Fi connection for just one second, what will happen? So the power system has given rise uh, to the development of various other fields, including electronics, communication, computer control, among others. Not only that, the power system area also benefit from the advancements of all these uh, new fields. It is a symbiotic relationship. Uh, we keep on improving uh, due to the improvement in some other fields. Okay, uh, I bet you have seen this slide before from the presentation of my colleague, Dr. Paul Z. So power system has remained the same ever since this was introduced. We have generation, transmission, and distribution to connect the power to the customers. It has gone under, it has undergone massive improvement, advancement, but the structure remains the same. We have this generation, transmission, and distribution. Uh, a good analogy with will be your internal combustion engine. You have a, a four-stroke engine, intake valve, uh, compression, combustion, and exhaust valve, uh, exhaust uh, stroke. It remains the same, but the engine has undergone tremendous advancement, the same like we do. So why do we need a protected or protection system? Okay, first of all is the safety of personnel, the person operating the system and utilizing the system. We need an interrupted uh, power supply. We need to ensure that our equipment will operate uh, continuously with long life and to ease and to lower the cost of maintenance. The, the reasons that we have a, a faults can come from basically four uh, items. First of all is the human error. Uh, human error in terms of uh, setting up the system or operating the system. Animal intrusion to the uh, compound of the transmission line, this substation for example. Natural disaster and aging of equipment. So I'll uh, explain the protection of power system in three uh, sections. The first section will be the protection of each and every component of the power system. Uh, the second one is uh, about ensuring the smooth operation of power system and finally on the domestic protection. So I'm going to use uh, the term protection in the strictest sense to means to protect the system against force and also loosely means uh, making things working accordingly, uh, making uh, the power system operate smoothly. Okay, we have generation, transmission, and distribution. So, what we have in those uh, uh, generation, transmission, distribution are transformers, generators, transmission lines, substation, and everything. So, I'll start by uh, discussing on the generator and transformer protection. I'll give you some a brief uh, idea on how the transformer and generator are protected. Basically, if you have an electrical engineering background, you know the Kirchhoff current law. Current going in must be equal to current going out. So with that respect, we are measuring that the current that goes into the equipment, in this case generator or transformer, and the current that comes out of the Generator has transformer. So if the current agrees, it means it is working under good condition, there's no fault. So if the input and output does not agree, it indicates a faulty system. So we should have a current transformer that will measure the input current at the one end and one output current at the other 
and and this current will be fed into a relay. So this relay will uh, do some comparison. What I'm showing you on the slide is a uh, electromechanical relay. Uh, maybe you can uh, figure out uh, this easily. You have a balanced beam here. Depending on the current that goes into the prime, uh, this coil on the left and the right, uh, different uh, force will be given to this uh, balanced beam. And the movement of this beam will either close the trip circuit or remain, uh, keep the circuit remains open. Okay, but these days, of course, uh, the implementation of the uh, comparison is being made by uh, computer based or microprocessor based relay. Okay, so how this concept is being used in the protection of transformer and generator? Let's take a look on the left here. You're having several sets of measurement on the input side of a stator and a set of measurement on the output side of the stator to be fed into the relay. Now on the right side, you have a transformer. This is the primary side of the transformer and secondary side. You have sets of measurement on primary side as well as measurement on the primary side. And this will be compared at the relay. Okay, now, uh, what uh, we need to have is uh, ability to detect fault correctly. So this is in fact uh, depends on the equipment being used. First of all, your city, whether the city is under saturation or not, whether the city is giving accurate reading or not, and then the behavior of the equipment, for example, transformer, you have a inrush current, which is of a transient nature, not a fault. Whether the fault occurs inside the transformer or outside of the transformer, uh, and then we need to decide whether it is a faulty condition or not. So you might uh, be tripping a healthy system due to the discrepancies in uh, measurement as well as operating condition. So you need to have a better coordination, you need to have a better discrimination of your, uh, for the relay. So in order to do that, you need to do some uh, feature acceleration. For example, a pattern recognition in order to differentiate a transient uh, uh, phenomenon with uh, the fault conditions and Perhaps you need a better relay design and improve the relay design to overcome the discrepancies of the measurement as well as uh, accounting for different behavior of the protection uh, of the equipment. For example, uh, under normal, uh, for, for a normal uh, relay, it can actually distinguish uh, between inrush current and internal fault current. But if you're using a different kind of transformer, with transformer with a different design, for example, uh, in order to achieve certain uh, certain objective, it will somehow affects uh, the protection system of the transformer. So you need to match the characteristic of your uh, transformer with the characteristic of your protection system. Okay. So some other force in the transformer includes overheating, uh, the quality of the insulation, which can be detected by various uh, means. In this case, I'm showing uh, thermal image of a uh, temperature of transformer. By this uh, thermal imaging, we can de uh, detect uh, the presence of a hotspot in transformer and proceed with whatever uh, needed to be done. Okay, as far as the generator protection, uh, you can, uh, there are various type of uh, generator protection. Each will uh, require different uh, sets of protection system, a specific or dedicated uh, protection system. All right. Then I'll move to the protection of the transmission line. Okay, transmission line is normally protected by using distance protection. It is actually 
uh, a measurement of the impedance of the line. Okay, you, you put one particular release at one end of the transmission line and it will measure the impedance across the transmission line. If the impedance fall within a certain value, that indicates a fault on the transmission line. If the impedance is greater than a certain threshold, that indicates external fault or perhaps uh, there's no fault. So basically, uh, what you need to do is to compare your measurement and the setting of the relay. Okay, shown on the right here is a blue line. This is the locus of a impedance of a transmission line. If what occurs on the transmission line, the impedance measured will be somewhere along this line. So let's say we are protecting the transmission line from one end to this end. So whatever impedance being measured here should cause the relay to trip. So we'll create a boundary here. Okay, this is called tripping region. Whatever measurement inside this region will uh, cause the relay to operate. So I'm arbitrarily drawing the region here. It can come from any shape. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. You're protecting this transmission line. You can have a circular shape centered at the origin or offset to the right. You can have a straight line as a boundary, even a rectangular characteristic. So whatever portion of the blue line inside the uh, circle or this uh, rectangular area will be protected. But uh, whether you are going to have a a good protection or not depends on the accuracy of measurement. Whether you have a good CT, current transformer, uh, whether you are having a uniform characteristic throughout the line. Okay, some transmission line might be a combination of overhead and uh, underground line, with charging current presence, different kind of faults. That will somehow make the measured impedance value not very reliable. It is also affected by fault resistance. So not necessarily your impedance being measured will fall on the blue line. It might be outside of the trip region. So in order to do that, we need to uh, play around with various characteristics. For example, uh, the circular characteristic, the rectangular characteristic. So these days, mostly people are using a rectangular characteristic. The reason uh, being is that previously, in order to have this rectangular characteristic, you need to have a four sets of relays, electromechanical relay. But these days, uh, everything is in one unit. You can have a rectangular relay synthesized by a microprocessor unit. But with the various uh, equipments connected to the transmission line, various operating condition, the boundary that you require here, a straight line, the green line here might not be accurate. I'm showing you uh, a case here. You're having this boundary on the right for one particular operating condition. So this measurement here, is outside the region. But somehow if the operating condition change, you'll need to have a different boundary. Okay, accounting for different boundary due to changing of operating condition as well as uh, the installation of various uh, equipment makes uh, the protection of transmission line messy. So you need to somehow uh, modify the characteristic of this relay instead of having a straight line here perhaps what you need is uh, something adaptive perhaps using two different sets of a uh, uh, boundary for different operating condition or perhaps one uh, set 
of boundary that covers various operating condition. So that can be done by uh, optimizing the boundary here. In this case, this is one of uh, our project uh, that uh, is related to the adaptive uh, distance relay. So the boundary is not necessarily a straight line here. We're now modifying that boundary uh, according to a certain criteria. Okay. So that is using the distance protection to protect the transmission line. These days, uh, people are starting to use uh, differential protection in the same way as the protection of the transport. Remember in the first part when I'm uh, described about the protection of a transformer, you are taking measurement from one end and compare it with the other end. It can be done to the transmission line. However, previous challenges was uh, getting the signal from one end of transmission line and then another signal several hundred kilometers away and then to be compared at a central location. It was a difficult task then, but these days with the advancement of a communication, fiber optic communication, uh, those can be implemented easily and it's going to be much, much more easy to implement. And uh, the last uh, component of the power system that I'm going to describe here is the distribution feeder. You have a radial feeder shown here on the top. So this is the source side. You have four sections here. If fault occurs somewhere along this side, this breaker will open. If fault occurs here, this breaker will open. Uh, take a note that even if fault occurs somewhere here, all three relays can detect the fault. So when four relays detect one single fault, we need to discriminate which relay should uh, do the job of uh, taking off the supply. So coordination is required here. One way of doing that is to uh, coordinate according to time. The relay closer to the downstream will be faster and the closer to the source will be slower. So if what occurs here, this protection system will deal with that. This remaining protection system can detect the fault, but it will not operate, allowing this part to operate first. But the problem with this is that you have a slower reaction time for fault closer to the source, which will uh, involve a higher current. So in order to, to uh, overcome that, we can coordinate based on current, okay? So the relay will create based on the value of the current threshold, regardless of the, the time is uh, uh, almost instantaneously, but uh, we are having a problem with that as well. Therefore, what we need to do is uh, to discriminate by both time and current by using uh, relay with inverse characteristic. There is a relay which will treat faster if the fault current is higher, and lower, uh, slower if the fault current is uh, lower. So this kind of connection is kind of easy if you have a simple system. But uh, if uh, the, the network gets complicated, for example, instead of radial, you have a ring system, mesh system, uh, connection is going to be more uh, elaborate and more tedious. And also, you might have a presence of generating source at the distribution feeders. For example, distributed tension, your photovoltaic uh, system, your wind farm, it is in the distribution feeders. So, it's going to be a very tedious job. So, in order to do that, we need to have, uh, we need to utilize uh, an advanced tool. For example, uh, 
you know, optimization tool, a, a special uh, computation tool for, for the setting. It cannot be done manually. It can be done manually, but it's going to be very, very messy. So uh, let's take a look at the relay technology. Uh, originally, it was electromechanical. The characteristics are fixed. Okay. You can have a certain characteristic based on the design, the shape, the size of the relay. If you want to switch to a different characteristic, uh, it's not possible with from mechanical relay. You need to uh, use a different uh, relay. But with the advance of microprocessor based relay, the characteristic, the features, uh, different relay uh, types can be inside one particular box only. It's just a selection of characteristic, a selection of a curve type, a selection of features all can be done uh, in one single relay unit, okay? That was uh, for the protection of each component of our system. So next, I'm going to explain about the operation of our system, how it is being protected. Uh, in this case, the, the term protection might, might not do justice, but I, I'm just going to, to use the term protection to loosely means uh, making sure the power system operates uh, smoothly. Okay, let's say you have a multiple number of generators, of course, and in order to supply your load, you need to know how to appropriate uh, the amount of generation to each generator. Okay, this can be, this needs to be done according to the fuel cost. There are various constraints to be concerned, uh, to be uh, taken into account. Uh, for example, the limits, generation limits of the generator, the ramping capacity, the fuel cost. You can also take into account the environmental aspect. For example, the emission. Okay. Everything must be taken into account in order for you to come up with the good generation schedule, which generator should be prioritized, which generator should uh, operate 24 hours, which generator should operate for just one hour, okay? And then you throw in renewable and storage. Of course, this will further add the complexity for the scheduling. So you need a more advanced optimization tools. Okay, uh, presence of a large number of RE can all be aggregated to uh, virtual power plant. You can have uh, many players in the system uh, competing at the power market in order to uh, to provide the capacity in terms of the generation capacity, ramping capacity, uh, reserve capacity, and etc. So you need some sort of optimization tools to solve this problem. And then talking about uh, uh, impact of a sizable penetration of renewable energy as well uh, solar energy wind energy as well as a uh, uh, charging station uh, for electric vehicle okay. the more you get this thing into this system is going to be the, the more difficult is going to be for 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 us to plan the generation scheduling that is one aspect of that and then a coordination on the uh, scheduling is going to be uh, complicated. And then it introduced a lot of power quality issues, how you're going to uh, maintain the voltage level, to reduce the harmonics. This can, uh, can, can needs to be uh, uh, looked into in detail. For example, if you have a, uh, harmonics due to the presence of uh, DG, okay? You need to have some sort of filter. Uh, one way, another way of doing that to, to remove the harmonic is to have a compensator. So this is one of the project that we did, uh, a VI compensator, okay? current and voltage compensator are designed to mitigate voltage and current harmonic simultaneously uh, using a newer control algorithm uh, with a certain uh, 
configuration of the uh, compensator and also reducing the cost without having to use uh, uh, so many expensive devices. Another part that requires attention is fault signature analysis. Okay, you can have a disturbance in the system due to the train encroachment, for example, uh, tree encroachment, lightning strike on the transmission line, uh, a broken uh, power system device. This will cause uh, a disruption to the system. Of course, your protection system can actually uh, isolate this type of fault, but it's also important to know what kind of fault actually occurs in order to, to do some uh, post-mortem on whether the protection system is uh, operating correctly, uh, whether we need some uh, fine-tuning in the protection system, or identifying whether the fault is of a transient nature, uh, temporary nature or a permanent fault. Okay. For example, if a, the tree falls into the line, uh, so somehow uh, we need to dispatch uh, staff to clear up the, the, the trees. So if it is lightning, uh, nothing, we, we should uh, don't have to do anything basically because it is uh, temporary. So we need to know what kind of fault occurs in system in order for, for us to come up with the uh, proper remedy for the system. Okay, what can be done here is uh, each kind of uh, fault will, uh, will have a, a specific characteristic just like your fingerprint. Okay, so lightning strike will have a certain characteristic in voltage and current, tree encroachment, crane encroachment, uh, city explosion. So what uh, we can do here is depending on the what kind of data that we have, okay, what kind of waveform that we have, we can process uh, to filter some uh, unimportant uh, information. We can utilize wave transform whatsoever, and then use some classification method in order to. Uh, determine what kind of fault that occurs on the system. Okay, This is very useful if you have a fault uh, recorder in various parts of the system. Okay, Again, uh, by having uh, the advancement in the communication field, uh, you can have a lot of measurement in place in various locations, various devices on the system. Uh, the correlation between certain events and a certain uh, behavior of protection system can be further analyzed correctly if you have a lot of data. Okay. okay last part will be on the domestic protection. Uh, this is not a, a, something that we do as a researcher, but uh, just for the benefit of us, uh, I'm just going to introduce you several uh, protective device that is available in your home. You are familiar with this box in your home, distribution, distribution box. You have basically three equipments inside. Okay, the first one is main switch. The function is to isolate the fault. It says you, you, you want to do some uh, wiring, you want to do some maintenance, so the main switch will isolate uh, the, your network from the supply of electricity. The second uh, device is called residual current device. Uh, this is a, a device that will detect uh, a leakage in your system. So if there is a leakage, the current in the live and neutral will not be the same. So uh, this will cause the residual current device to trip. Okay. This is on the leakage. And then we have a miniature circuit breaker. The function of the breaker is to isolate the circuit if there is an overcurrent. Okay. Let's take a look at the typical uh, single line diagram of a domestic protection system. You have a power coming from your 
supplier. This is the main switch. Okay. After the main switch, you normally divide your circuit into two circuit. The first circuit is for the lighting and general power. And the RCD are normally rated at 100 milliamp. And then you have another circuit where uh, it is normally used for switch socket outlet okay, with the sensitivity of the residual current device at 30 amps. And then you have final circuit for one particular lamp, another for air conditioner, each with different value of the uh, miniature circuit breaker. Right? The conductors that will be used for your lighting circuit is uh, 1.5 millimeter square size. For your uh, heater, for your aircon, it should be 4 millimeter square. And for your socket, it should be uh, 2.5 generally. Okay, so that ends the discussion, uh, the, the presentation on the protection of power system. I'll continue with other activities of the, uh, the group. We also involved in consultancy, training, and community service. I'm just going to list uh, several projects that we, are, we have done. For As far as the consultancy is concerned, we can do for analysis, load for flow analysis, harmonic analysis, okay? Uh, we have done several projects with uh, magnitude power, uh, iSmart gurus, TNB Remarko, okay. power current uh, connection. Also, some uh, of the project includes uh, the design of off-grid photovoltaic system uh, for iSmart gurus, for Asian technical support, as well as uh, MRCSB. We also provide trainings for the STEM education at school. We have a, a dedicated uh, set of equipment for the training of uh, the photovoltaic system. We have done this to many schools, more than 30 schools already. It's still ongoing. I still have a, a lot of uh, requests for this. Uh, the training also was provided to the rural areas, to Kampung Orang Asli. For example, in this case, Kampung Orang Asli will intake Utapa. Some community service, the installation of the solar PV panel at school and uh, in the rural areas as well. There are more projects coming in. And I believe that will end my presentation. Feel free to contact us. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you Dr. Mama Hafiz Habibuddin for sharing this information. Uh, uh, about this research group and the power engineering research group. And now I would like to open the session for Q&A. Uh, please post eh, your question at the comment of the FB Live Schools of Electrical Engineering. So if you have any questions, so you can post. There is a question, so I just want to ask maybe one question related to this. Uh, what is the best way to save this electricity? Can solar PV help to save the electricity? Maybe a lot of people want to know about this. There are two things uh, uh, of a concern. First is to save on electricity. The other is to save on the cost of electricity. Okay. If you want to save electricity, the best way is to utilize less, less uh, equipment. As far as the usage of the solar PV, uh, you need to look at your uh, load. Whether you have uh, light load in your, your premise, for example, at home, just for lighting and general switches, 
whether you have air conditioner in place or not. If you have air conditioner, a lot of air conditioner, perhaps uh, the usage of uh, solar PV is uh, a good alternative to reduce the cost. Uh, however, you should take note on the investment that you need to make and the payback period. It, it kind of uh, long. Uh, if you were to compare Malaysia with some other countries. And nonetheless, it, it is, of course, uh, uh, better to have PV installed in your home, but the payback period is kind of longer than the other countries which uh, have a more expensive electricity rate. Because the, the electricity rate in Malaysia is kind of uh, uh, less expensive, so it makes no sense if you install a solar PV panel just to power up your refrigerator, your lamp, and your fan. But of course, if you have a, a larger load, then it's possible. Okay, thank you. There is a question from Ridwan Uthman here. Can you share how many pendant floor lamp that can MCV 60 support? Thank you. Well, uh, a general uh, guideline would be six because that's what uh, uh, the contractor will offer a of new housing area will, will do. I mean, well, for one particular MCB, about six because one MCB will cover a specific area in your, your house. Okay, one MCB for, for the living area, one MCB for the kitchen, one MCB for the other, uh, the other rooms. So the actual numbers actually can be increased if you know the current uh, drawn by the device. If you have a uh, 20, I'm, I'm not very good on mathematics without calculator these days, uh, basically, your voltage is 240 volts. With your power, you can compute your the current requirement of your load by uh, uh, knowing your uh, voltage of your equipment and the voltage 24, 240 volt. Um, from there, you can complete your current. So as long as the current doesn't exceed 5 amp, it is possible. Okay, thank you. Just another question uh, maybe I want to ask. Can IoT give saving in electricity consumption? Can IoT give saving in electricity consumptions? That actually depends on uh, how, what kind of load that you have. Uh, I'm talking about residential and office or industrial uh, plant. Uh, IoT here means that you can control the lighting, control your icon uh, remotely or intelligently. If you are dealing with air conditioner, uh, perhaps, not, not perhaps, for sure, uh, those kind of things can uh, optimize the, uh, the setting of your air conditioner and um, in the end, reduce the consumption of electricity. But uh, if you have uh, IoT in your home, uh, it's going to, to, to be useful, but the percent of uh, saving is not that much. Uh, so, sometimes the cost of uh, those devices for residential it can can be significant and these devices are always on standby they utilize electricity as well for example if during the night when you switch off all the lights the device will be still on standby but but the the, the power requirement is not that much uh, so i, I believe uh, the more load that you have the more benefit that you will gain from the usage of IoT device. Okay, 
but for sure it, it will uh, help you in the reduction of the electricity consumption okay all right last last questions huh? maybe uh, what does the consumer must do in order to make sure the protective device in our home is working well well uh I've shown you three devices, uh, the main switch, the RCD and MCB. You don't have any means to test them with the exception of the RCD. Okay, at the RCD, you have a, a test button uh, that can test the circuit. You just press that button. If it trips, it means that it is under good uh, condition. Okay, maybe you can do that uh, once a month. But for the other equipment, generally uh, from, from uh, the manufacturer's uh, information, it generally lasts about 20 to 30 years. If it is within that, uh, it's rock, it has been under, it been installed for more than 30 years, 30 years perhaps uh, you should install a new one. But not, not so critical eh? because if the, the function deteriorate uh, it actually will still work for example if 6 milliamp mcb ideally it will trip at 6 sorry 6 m mcb will trip at 6 m but over the time as the uh, material deteriorate it will trip at a lower value so it's kind of uh, safer for you Perhaps uh, okay. uh, not. <coughs> yes. 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 Okay. <coughs> okay. Perhaps once again, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much to all viewers. Okay. Thank you very much to Dr. Mama Hafiz Habibuddin for sharing all the informations related to this power engineering group. Uh, now I would like to pass over to Konsharif Huzaima for the closing of this webinar series. Series five for this university of Indonesia. Over to you, Puan Sharifah Huzaimah. Thank you, Prof Kamal. And once again, I would like to extend my thanks and appreciation to Dr. Hafiz Habibuddin. I would say uh, the topic I have in speech just now. All right, viewers, we are at the end of our session today. Thanks to all viewers for taking out time from your busy schedule to watch this live telecast. And please don't forget to join our next session of webinar series, 14th of July, with our next guest speaker, Associate Professor IR, TS Dr. Ahmad Atif Muhammad Fauzi, the Director of Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics on the title of Empowering Malaysia's Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. And please like, comment and share our Facebook and videos to your colleagues and friends. All right, before I end this session, I would like to share some thoughts. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Thank you all. Stay safe. Keep your distance and stay tuned. Wabilahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.